What's going on, man? How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you doing, Adam? Good, good, good. Thanks for coming in, man. My pleasure. This show is sponsored by Resilient Real Estate Group, powered by eXp. So, you're thinking about buying and selling soon? Yes, we know you probably know a realtor, your mom's best friend's cousin's neighbor, puts her face on the local shopping cart. But you know what? Our friends at Resilient Real Estate Group have helped hundreds of thousands of people sell houses over the years, and they definitely know what they're doing based on their five-star review on Google and Zillow. So, it doesn't matter if you're looking to buy a million-dollar house or a fixer-upper, make sure the next time you're thinking about buying and selling real estate, you give our friends a call over at Resilient Real Estate Group. And now we're back to the show. Why don't you tell everyone who you are, dude? Uh, so, um, I'm uh, Akbar Rizvi. <laughs> I am an owner of uh, Nice Guys Burgers. Uh, we perfect in making uh, fresh food, so our motto is uh, feel the quality and freshness in every bite, or taste of quality and freshness in every bite, and that's what we shoot for. Um, and um, yeah, so whatever we make in our profit, we share with the homeless people. Um, and uh, we've been doing this and it's great. How long uh, have you guys been doing it for? Uh, six months now. Six months, Yes. nice, dude. So you were saying you're before the podcast, you were saying you were an engineer. What made you switch from being an engineer to cooking burgers? <laughs> that's, that's a great question, Adam. Uh, well, you know, six months ago, I was an engineer working for top companies. Uh, but the idea was, you know, stock market crash and 200 engineers got laid off and I was part of that too. Okay. But uh, the idea of uh, me leaving the corporate world was uh, was very different uh, than you know me uh, getting fired because of the economy. It was it was it was all about like you know serving people. So you know, while I was working for carpet, if you would have given me an onion to cut, I would have not cried. Oh really? Because the emotions were gone and everything yeah, yeah. else was gone. And the idea was you know I would uh, just ignore the homeless people because it, car carpet was just like very tiring, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody, but it was just like just to get the four percent raise. Everybody was just trying to jump on somebody else's body and just to reach there. So I figured it out. It was never for me, you know. So yeah. I started this restaurant. I Were think. you cooking before? Yes. Has cooking always been a passion for you? Always, yeah, yeah. I mean, the idea of uh, me, my grandmother let me in the kitchen at the age of eight. Okay. So, you know, um, uh, I, I've been cooking. And then uh, while I was in school, uh, injuring was very tiring. Uh, it was very uh, hard. So I was, my diet was just like eating out of vending machine, you know, mm. just Cheetos and Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea was uh, me, uh, while it was, uh, my, my mother was also a single mother, so I have to raise myself and the family, so I was working. Uh, so I was uh, working in top restaurants where, you know, the idea was the meat has to melt in somebody's mouth and, you know, learning all those skills. And then while uh, learning automations, you know, uh, having a food consistency every day, you know, I used to work at McDonald's too, cleaning bathrooms mm-hmm. while, so it was a t- it was not an easy journey for you know me becoming an engineer, and that's what I tell everybody. You know the idea of uh, life is you know all engineers fail. They don't tell you. I have failed physics two once, calculus two <laughs> once. So it's just not uh, the idea of not giving up. So yeah. yeah so uh, putting all those experiences together, uh, we we created uh, you know to our our burgers. One of them is a Michelin burger. Uh, so all the meat is uh, grinded fresh, and then the buns are custom. And, you know, again, our motto is uh, taste the quality and freshness in every bite. And that's what we shoot for. So where's your location at? Uh, it's by uh, Bloomington, California. Okay. Yeah, its address is 11436 Cedar Avenue. Yeah, it's not that far from here, is it? No, no, no. No, no, you yeah. just come down Maine or what? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. I think it's, uh, it's you can t- also take inside streets. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes. So is it just you running the place or who? who uh, me and my brother. Oh, nice. At the moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... So was your brother already in food, or did you go to him with this idea and been like, hey, dude, I, this happened, I want to start my own restaurant, and then what did he say from there? Yeah, so we used to work for our uncle and uh, uh, in San Diego downtown, so we were uh, working there. So we, we already had spent, like, I have spent, like, 20 years of my life in the restaurant industry. All right. He is also around there, so, you know, so we, we did that, right? So uh, so we, we, or we knew what we were doing, so we knew, like, uh, we knew how, how important the customer service is, how the service is, you know, so we, we decided that we have to start this, you know. So yeah. The idea came from uh, What made you pick us. burgers? Uh, yeah. I assume there's, you could have, I mean, you could have picked anything. So what was it about hamburgers that you guys picked? Right, right. Uh, you know, the idea of uh, uh, keeping a short menu, you know, we could have kind of like in, the in and out style. Yes. Yeah. So it should be just one, two, three. If you see our menu, it's just four items only. And, and, uh, my, my vision and our vision, uh, is having a perfection in every day because I have seen people crying in, uh, McDonald's parking lot because they have memories attached, uh, mm-hmm. you know, of that big Mac or, you know, simple three pickles or two pickles because of food consistency. And you, because they have memories attached because they have come as a kid while with their grandmother. So that's the idea we, we should have. If we do too much, uh, we can't keep up with, you know, the freshness and 
of course we we get f uh, fresh meat from you know our vendors and you know yesterday was a farmer's day so we posted about farmers too and the idea of you know having fresh meat and uh, hand-picked lettuce and everything else uh, we can't keep up if we start selling more items well just then then it just makes it more difficult of course i mean like i i mean it, i think i saw the other day like uh cheesecake factory has a uh, Cheesecake Factory has like 250 items on their menu. Like yeah. even when I go there, I'm like, oh my god, these are so many. Like right. it's just crazy. I, I agree on that. Uh, you know the idea of because uh, next thing you want to know, uh, you want to when you want to make sure you know your your when you grow your person you hire, uh, regardless. You know because anybody can be in need. You know in this yeah, economy, yeah. people come. I've seen people 55, 56 years old versus people 16, 18, 21 years old. So they should be able to adapt in your kitchen, you know? Yeah. Is it just you two working? Yes. Oh, yes, wow. Yes, yes, yes. I do have, uh, I think, one part-time employee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he uh, comes on weekends, yeah. Calling on weekends? Yeah, yeah. But you two are in there cooking every day? Uh, my brother is, a. Uh, uh, he's more on the outside, like mm -hmm. sales and stuff, but it's mostly me and another employee. So who's, hand who's handling right now, then? Uh, right now, it's my brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what's your guys' hours? How often are you open? Oh, yeah, so uh, from Monday to Thursday and Sunday, Day. we're from 11 to 11 mm -hmm. so it's like a 11 to 11 p.m 12 hours operation and then the other one is uh, uh on weekends we go from 11 till 12 okay yeah yeah, yeah. So you guys get that late night crowd yes yes yeah. yes yes yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah so what has that transition been for you going from corporate to now being an entrepreneur running and especially luckily you had some experience in the restaurant business but obviously those two worlds are completely different how's that been it's a great question, Adam. The yeah. idea of uh, life is, you know, service. And I always want to be a man of service, you know. So God forbid if I leave the world tomorrow and I plant a tree and somebody's getting a shade under it, you know, I'm still getting blessings in my grave. Mm -hmm. Somebody got a fruit out of it, I'm still getting blessings in my grave. And and it's, it's the best feeling in the world when you serve people. Uh, I've seen people coming, you know, there's some customers, uh, they tell me their personal stories, you know, so... If you go on our Instagram page, we like to lift people up and motivate them too. And I've seen people coming, like some people who are trying to be an engineer, they come to me like, second, uh, the school is getting very crazy, I'm about to quit. I say, no, don't do it. Second year is the one, you know, is the hardest. If you can make it through that. And you know, just, it's a great feeling. And I've sometimes I've seen people like uh, a, a man, you know, uh, a man in his 40s would come and he, he would tell his story, you know, it inspired me. He tells me a story like how his uh, brother end up in drugs and his wife end up in drugs. His wife, uh, not his wife, his brother's wife, end up in drugs. And the kids had no future, so they were on the street. So he took a responsibility. He bring them in the house. So he sacrificed his marriage life. Uh, he's been single all his life. And it, every time I see him, uh, doesn't matter how tired I am, it just lifts my spirit yeah. up. I, for with a big respect, I stand up on, from my, you know, seat or kitchen where I am. I just come down and serve him, you know, mm -hmm. personally. And that's the idea of life, you know. When you hear different people's stories, you know, it's, it's, a, it's again, coming back to the, the life of service, you know. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I've read Bible, I've read Quran, I'm Muslim, and I, I, I also read uh, Bible, too, because that's mm -hmm. also our book. And it says the serving orphans, you know, it's a big deed in front of God's eyes, you know. At the end of my life, you know, I want to make sure when I meet God, you know, he should just say like, Akbar, you did yeah. it right. So did you feel like when you were doing engineer stuff, it just wasn't fulfilling you in life? Yes, yes, uh, it was it, it was not, it was not, because uh, it was, you know, it was all about profits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just never for me, you know. I, I felt like, you know, I'm gonna get lost in the history. You know, I wanna, you know. So but at least was, you had the ability to walk, you know, like obviously them change it, but it's like, it's crazy how so many people will get into certain career paths yeah. and they hate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they stick through it because that's all they've known and that's all they've done, you know what right. I mean? So it's like, for them, it's like, they, I always tell people all the time, it's like, you think you'll like it until you get in it and you might not like it. And that's right. okay too. But it's like, it's completely different than what you think it's gonna be for the most part. Right, I always say the biggest discovery in the world is self-discovery, finding yourself. And I'm sure Adam, you took a path too of doing, starting this 100%. podcast. hundred percent, yeah. But the, the, so people always hit me up like, oh, I wanna do a podcast. I'm like, okay, that means you have to go find guests and then you gotta shoot and then people cancel on you and then you gotta have someone edit and then you gotta do all this. It's not just like, oh, jump in front of the camera and, and shoot videos and I'm like, we don't make any money off of this. Right. So it's a negative loss every time we do one. Right. Plus my time right you know or i could be doing something else that makes money right so it's like you really have to want to do them right and it's like the reason we started it because we had so many clients that like weren't great at promoting their businesses and they were great at 
what they did, but they sucked at promoting themselves. And then they were struggling. They weren't making any money. So I was like, well, let's just come on here and talk about your business. You know what I mean? Like, that's really why this whole thing started. Right. And yeah. you and then again, you you see the happiness in 100%, the service you're because, providing them. Because people don't realize how hard it is. Really, it is. And there's not that many people. Like, I've had people on the podcast, like, you're the first person to ever help me support my business. Right. Out, like, not even my friends and family. Because right. it's so difficult. You're competing against so many people. Like, even for you, you're like, you're competing against In-N-Out and McDonald's. Right, and, right every other person in the world it's tough man it's not a it's not an easy thing you know every time I, I this is what i always say you know when you have a good heart a lot of people say the biggest organ in the body is your brain i say it's the heart because if you have a good heart the energy gets transferred to your hands yeah and it's a great product comes out just a burger or a great podcast and that's what you have yeah. a great heart you know so what made you give back to the homeless just, what was that like obviously there's you could do any, you can get back to there's so many people that need help so what was it about them that kind of drew, drew you to it you know I, I'm, I'm always a believer in finding a permanent solution homeless people you know they're more physically fit than you and me or anybody they're just being uh, defeated in the mind mm. it's very sad while me growing up a lot of people I don't want to name them they would say you can never be an engineer you should be a mechanic yeah and I wrote it down that, right, you mm -hmm. know, and that gave me a fire. So every time I see some people, and I l always look for a permanent solution. Me, I don't give them money because next thing you want to know, you know, they can have a drink or something, they flip off the bridge, God will question me. So what mm -hmm. I tell them, I tell them, what are you looking for, you know? There's $7 federal, uh, I think, uh, a way of getting a California ID, and I tell them, sit down in a library, and if you need blankets or sleeping bag or something, a permanent solution, you know, go and work at a warehouse. So instead of me feeding them, then, you know, next thing you want to know, it just becomes like a, a, a permanent helping hand. Yeah. And, you know, next thing you want to know, their kids are seeing that they will be in the same mindset. So homeless people are the one, you know, because most of them, they don't survive in the winter. So they all come in from Chicago, everywhere else to California. That's why the streets gets very crowded. So um, most of them, are, again, are defeated from the mind. So that's what we do in our Instagram page, too. We want to help everybody, you know, uh, and succeed uh, with the with the right mind. You know, we tell them like, regardless if somebody tells you you're not good enough or, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. You know, you should listen to your heart and your mind. So, you know, if you can get it, get it right here, you know, it's very yeah. important. So homeless people are important. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, helping single pe single women, single parents, because my mother was a single parent too, and I always say like, you know, I can go back and do engineering. But being a single parent, regardless, father, mother, you you have, I mean, I can never do that. It's the hardest thing in the world to be a single mother uh, because, you know, uh, and, and they all carry a big responsibility for the society uh, because Alexander the Great once said, you give me good mothers, I'll give you great leaders. And that's the idea of, you know, and that's why I created a Hey Social Friend Finder too. It's an app for people with high morals and ethics, you know, who are against... Uh, of course, we are not angel, but, you know, we try to make a place uh, where, you know, good people match together or at least be friends. And they create like great society, you know, in, you know, it can be through babies or kids. Right. So we're looking for the next hundred years. So the, our, our app is all about like when I was in school, I was building that again. It was just all about service. Right. Mm -hmm. When meeting God and just getting a thumbs up from him and saying that you did it right. Right. So it, it, it's all about like people who are against uh, cursing. I mean, of course, we're not angel. We can try, yeah. right? It can, right? Against uh, war, you know, against social injustice or against, you know, racials or anything, right? So trying to make a world a better place. But again, coming back to the point, uh, if we can create that environment, you know, most of the people, they, they don't, uh, they, are grow, they are grown up in an environment where they were supposed to tell, I mean, they were supposed to be told that you're not good enough. So that's the idea of uh, little by little, helping society little by little helping homeless people little by little you know were you always this way or or was there a shift did something happen or because obviously the way you think and the thing you do is not natural it's not normal so for you has it always been this way adam it's a great question again the idea of uh you know the poet iqbal and it's his middle eastern poet he says oh 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 god make him hit with the wave a big wave you know why? Because the idea of life is when you get hit with a big wave, that's when you get kind of like a wake up call. Clarity. I was in a car accident uh, in uh, 10 years ago or 12 years ago. I was 23 at that time. Uh, and 
they, I was fine, God was kind. And the doctor said, we just want to make sure we want to put you in the MRI. MRI was like this close, you know, how they yeah, put yeah, you yeah, in yeah. there. And they have an emergency button, right? If you don't. F- yeah, if you get freaked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had one. Right. Oh, you did. I've had one. I'm not scared of like small places, but the lady before me, they're like, hey, you're going to go after her. I'm like, okay. Like two minutes later, they're like, hey, you're up. And I'm like, doesn't it take like a half hour? They're like, yeah, but she like freaked out. Like, so she's not going to do it. I'm like, oh, okay. But my guy, he was like, hey, I'm not going to be the guy that lets you out. I'm going to lunch. And I'm like, that's fine. Just make sure your guy <laughs> doesn't forget about me. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know right, I mean? like, right, right. Wow. Yeah. So I went in and I went in there. Uh, couldn't handle 10 seconds 10 seconds oh you got freaked out i did yeah i did and and then i learned a lesson that if akbar you're not ready for the samurai how are you going to be ready for your grave yeah that changed you know the Mm. point was right uh he did a uh you know like a wish to all his community and said oh god hit them with a big wave and i wish everybody you know once you find that path of self-discovery it will be a big wave you you will encounter and that will change everything so ever since then i decided like you know uh help the world mm-hmm. you know be ready because you have a final destination everybody does yeah. and not scaring everybody else but it's just saying like uh don't don't devote everything to to uh you know god but at least do it little by little like compound effect yeah. little by little do you feel like god makes people have waves to see when things aren't going great for them if they still look towards god of course yeah yeah you know it, it you know i always say have a faith without the faith you can't even walk 10 steps. You're going to fall down. There were times when we were like, you know, you, how you say negative, you were going with the po- this podcast. There were times when we were only doing, uh, we would get excited if somebody ordered a, a cheeseburger combo. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like first uh, for one, two months, uh, I would say first 35 days, 31, we would get excited. Oh, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a Michelin combo, or, you know, but God is kind and people are coming with, you know, sometimes m- more orders and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the idea of life, you know, having faith. Uh, once you have a faith, you know, uh, things work like magic. So you got to have a faith. Otherwise, you won't uh, walk 10 steps in life. You will fall down. Do you think you need faith more when th- things are going bad t- so you don't give up? Always, always. You know, I I have uh, Because easily, like, you know, when the car accident happened or when you lost your job or... You know, I think most people, if you don't have, if you don't believe that there's a plan out there, then it's like, why'd this happen to me? And it goes negative instead of like, what door or what opportunity is going to open up next? You know? That's a great question, Adam. I, when we wake up in the morning, you know, it's the energy we create. So we always say, you know, in our, uh, in, in our religion, it says, right on the right arm is the right angel writes good stuff and then whatever you do bad on the left arm the left angel writes that so when you wake up and you create that energy of saying that oh man it's you know god sends the angel and say what is my person saying talking today about yeah oh the angels say to god oh you know what he wake up and he said it's going to be a bad day today and god say okay yeah that's what he said make his day bad Mm -hmm. so you know it's the energy of uh, you creating how you want to spend your day so if you wake up as like you know for full gratitude because even right now me and you breathing we should say thank to god you know i think in, it's hard nowadays because i think we 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 take we take uh what sort of let's say we take for granted the small things that we have now because of the because of like social media and i think the expectation i feel really bad for young people like younger people that don't have guidance it's like i don't think they realize what the world actually is and what they see on the internet is 99% not real and, and only maybe 1% of those people will ever see it. And if you're leaning towards that, then your your, your life is not going to be valued. You know? uh, true, true. You know, I agree with you and it's it's very sad, uh, you know. Because uh, you, because you, you, cause people on the, don't show the, the real world on social media. Like, no one's bragging about their 90, 99 Honda Civic that drives them to work every day. But then all you do ever see is when you go on Instagram, Range Rovers and, and, and Ferraris and Lambos. And, and it's like 99.9 of you will never have one of those. And so it's like if you're, if you're comparing yourself, because we're humans, we compare ourselves to that lifestyle. It's like it's, un, it's unattainable an unattainable life that so it's just i think it's sad that the world is going to a lot of people are going to be let down in their lives of course you know i'll tell you my personal experience and how i was able to overcome this kind of experience you know uh, 
in in our in our culture or you know people in like from different cities like i mean different countries like mexican arabs or some other europe they have a competition it's always our you know our parents are always being good but then you know they haven't learned the skill of letting a kid to be in uh unique mm-hmm. whatever he wants let him do it right so they, there was always a comparison like oh you know what uh look at your cousin he went to this school look at you you're still at the community college and that pressure is also built by parents too right some of them but do you feel like parents are that way because they're they're um they're worried what people are going to think of them that if their kids don't succeed they look at they're going to be looked down as bad parents of course of course so the pressure of them i i think that's what like i remember um i've been doing real estate eight years now and i opened my own office two years in and it was in downtown and we redeveloped the whole office and one day my mom walked in it was like all this work's being done and and she's like i don't even she was sitting in my office it's like contractors are in there painting and stuff she's like i don't want to know how much this money is costing you like i don't want to know how much this costs and i was like you can leave and she's like what do you mean i go don't bring this negative Mm. thing to me like you can leave like just because you're you you're scared for you, right. don't be scared for me. Like yeah. I'm not scared. Right. So don't be don't try to push your you're you're scared. I'm not. I agree. You know what I mean. And but then it's funny is like you wrap it around eight years later, and it's like now she only brags to everyone of what I've built. Oh, great. Well, why? Because it makes her. Right. Sadly, it makes her look better. But right. if I failed and. Yeah. I was working a nine to five or whatever, yeah, yeah. but but then that's what I'm saying. Like living an average life is not something people brag about. I, I agree. I agree. especially in America. I agree. You know. I know. I agree. Hundred percent. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I gotta keep it tight. Give me my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag. I'm eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I gotta keep it tight. Give me my bag, my bag, my bag, my bag. I'm eyes on the price. Mm. You know I can waste no time, no time, because I gotta keep it tight. I, I always say like being honest with yourself uh, is the best thing you can do you know when I was at community college I was 18 years old and we I would personally hide myself that I'm at going to community college not at a four-year college yeah because you know when you're young that's what you because you everybody asks you which school you go what, to yeah well, who do you get accepted to right, right, no, right. you're not like, pressure, yeah, I'm going right? to RCC like, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I and you know I I would like tell uh, other people like I would try to avoid that question because mm-hmm. I don't lie right yeah. so the idea was they asking me which company call it or which school you're doing and all that so the minute I became honest with myself because you know you can, the best thing you can do is self evaluation yeah uh, before you go to bed find out you know what can how can you get better 10% right uh, and it also started uh, me while I was driving Uber too right so living in a fear like you just you just said is the craziest thing you can do yeah. uh, while I was in community college you know people cannot bet on you the government or anything because they don't know you're going to be an engineer doctor mm-hmm. or a lawyer or somebody right so they only disperse very limited amount of loan so I have to drive an Uber right so next thing you want to know uh, Uber we're driving Uber and people would just misuse your car we'll put like six people in there yeah and maybe some would be like very heavy weight and nothing like and then they would say your car is small so I mean I was a science student and engineer i would say that's <laughs> against the gravity you know <laughs> your waist is 34 yeah, my exactly. car is like this big right yeah so they would misuse you right so uh, i would always tell to god that god give me something you know where i can i i don't live in fear and i agree with you because you said fear is the worst thing right you want to keep that fear away because right when you were starting that business yeah. right you want to keep that away and i agree with you so when i started the community college uh, i was living in fear i would put candies sodas in my car because i was uh because some bad people would just rate you in a bad rating, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And next thing you want to know, you you get deactivated with your one of the source sure. of income, right? Yeah. And the idea of life was me decided that you know what I what can I do? And that's what I'm saying: that self evaluation, being honest with yourself. I said, go to the take a transfer to four year college. You you're not going to be living in fear. So once I transfer to the four year college, then the government and everybody else start believing because in they start, they're going to bet on you. Yes, yeah. so the disperse amount because they don't want to waste resources. I agree. I agree, and that's how they look at it. Oh, you're, at this moment in time, you've wasted a resource. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And then I give that uh, they would give like 
10,000, 5,000 a month, no problem. And you know, the fear was gone. I can li- literally follow the laws laws mm-hmm. of America and say, yeah. you know what, only four people in the car. I will still have candies and everything yeah. for you because I, I like to give people, right? And But then, you know, what I'm saying is, as the minute you're honest with yourself and you know where you are, instead of lying to people, that you have instead of 99 honda you're telling them you have a range rover yeah you can never grow Mm -hmm. so you my life growth out of community college to four-year college fear became less then i got to corporate because then i was like i'm on the mercy of these guys if i start a family next thing you want i get fired i don't even have a spare tire it's almost like you driving a car in the jungle well it's like people always ask me they're like how do you do this job where you don't have a consistent paycheck they're like, how do you handle like not knowing where your next check's coming from? And I'm like, I have full control what I do and how much money I make. And I'm like, you don't. If you work for a company and they need to lay you off, they lay you off. There's nothing that is guaranteed there. The difference is, is that you have falseness that there's a guarantee there when I know that I don't have a guarantee. That's the difference between me and you. I agree. And that's and and so some people it's always so funny people go like how do you handle it? How do you handle not having not knowing when the next deal's coming in and not knowing this and da, da, da. I'm like how do you know that your company's not going to get sold tomorrow and then you lose your job? Right. Or they fi- or some new new AI replaces you or whatever it is. So it's like one of these things where it's like I don't I don't even think about that. Yeah. You why are you worried? Why are you worried for something for me yeah. that I'm not even worried about? Yeah. You know, I always say to people, uh, don't be friends with people who are not bringing at least one, two, three thousand dollars value in your life. Mm-hmm. Be friends with people who will create a value for you. A lot of people come and ask me, like, you know, I need a, how how do I start a business? I sit down with them. I tell them, you know, you can do this. You can do this. Mm-hmm. You can create a passive income. Buying a laundry mat. Just have to read their audits. You know, mm-hmm. go on biz buy sell, or if the person is selling the business, make sure he's retiring. You know, he's old age. He's he's not selling because it's not making. Because it's not money. making money. Yeah. Did you did you buy your company? No, no. I started from scratch. Scratch, scratch. Yeah. But and that's the thing that people are, like. There's gonna be a lot of baby boomers yeah. in the next ten years right. that are gonna let go a lot of companies that are profitable. Right. That people just they don't have anyone to take over. Like we're actually. Uh, I have a business partner out in Chattanooga and we buy properties and there's a, <clears throat> this uh, husband and wife, they're like in their seventies nice. and they're like, Hey, we have, we have a uh, 17 properties we want to get rid of. And we're like, really? Like why? You know? And they're like, well, we're getting too old. We don't want to deal with them anymore. And our kids want nothing to do with it. And in our head, we're like, Ch-ch-ch-. like, why would you not like, right. why would you not want to take care right. of this? Right? right. But they're just people that don't. Yeah. And so that like, the opportunity that's coming forth in the baby boomer age is going to be massive for people that want to play the game right, that's smart with money, can save some money up, can buy some businesses, can run some stuff, dude, like, it's going to be epic. Right. Because the hardest part is starting the business. Yeah. When, every, when, when anyone I talk to, they're like, oh, well, it was my parents' business and I took it over. I'm like, bro, like you, that's a cheat code. And they're like, why? I go, the hardest part is the first 10 years. If your parents got past 10 years, you're right. just in, you're in growth mode or you're in maintain mode. Right. That's it. You're not startup mode anymore. Startup right. mode is the hardest mode. Right. Because you're still trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Right. Like nowadays, like I tell people all the time, like I'm eight years into this. This is like, like I, I could do this for the next fifty years of my life. Like I've built something up. It's right. it, deals are deals are coming in. People know who we are. Like we don't have to grind out like we used to. It's different. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, and you can always transfer that to your uh, kids. A hundred percent. Brothers, sisters. Yeah. So I have three step kids, and I always say like, "So you guys are gonna get into real estate? Oh, why would we want to do that?" I'm like, "Why would you not?" Like you guys are in, they're like uh, the oldest one's fifteen. I'm like, yeah. you could be doing in five years. I was like, I'd be like, you could easily come work here and be like set. Right. Like it'll be set for you. Right. I'm like, why would you go do something else? Like, right. come on. Right. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, the law of California. It's uh, once you create, once you make as a, uh, as a over eighty nine or hundred k, you fall in that bracket of fifty five percent tax. Yeah. So it's like thirty. Uh, I think it's fifty percent, uh, thirty or forty-five percent state or federal tax. I don't know, but I know I was supposed to get this much, but I, I was paying fifty-five percent tax. That's why you got to play. The, you got to. Uh, we meet with my CPA on the <laughs> yeah, in yeah. December every year. Right. Uh, and then that's the game that you. Oh, now that's a. Isn't that weird? Like now you have like. 
people think like I, was at, I had someone on right before you that's running for office and they're talking about like business owners they think oh we're so rich and we own businesses it's like but yeah but now it's like <clears throat> i remember i was in the car with my dad like a month ago and my yeah. cpa called me and we were talking about it was in december so we we're pl- talking about 2023 taxes and what we're gonna do and and my dad worked the same job for 39 years i hung up and he's like man he goes i don't know how you handle that i'm like what are you talking about he's like you're talking numbers that like I've never had to think. I never worried about. He's like my whole life. My dad's sixty six years old. He's like I never worried about like, do we need to spend a certain amount of money to lower our tax liabilities? And like he's like, how do you like even think about this stuff? I'm like I don't. That's why I pay that guy. Right. Like I have no idea what he's talking about. Right. I just say like, hey, you need to. Yeah, this, don't don't. I'll pay tax. I don't right. mind paying taxes, yeah, yeah. but just don't make me pay too much in taxes. Yeah, yeah. So, so for you, like, is the goal to open more? Yes. Or is it just to stay small? Like, what's the vision of the company? Yeah, it's a great question again. Uh, a lot of people do come to us and they say, franchise, you know, can we do a franchise with you? Mm-hmm. Uh, we only hire on the basis of somebody's smiling mm-hmm. or, you know, that's the energy, you know, because uh, I always say, you know, uh, service, right? So we want to see if this guy is after money or service. Yeah, yeah. Because I always say uh, service first and money will come. And uh, so, you know, people come and, you know, but they come up with so many things they say and i always say like people uh the most successful people i met in my entire life were the people who would always stay in their lane mm-hmm. uh just do their thing do your thing uh, not left right yeah you know, not jumping on the crypto or not jumping on nft or if they're jumping on crypto they're just in their lane and doing crypto well right? how many people lost their shirts on nfts right right because they thought it was a cool thing to do right right i mean again some made money some, some made money for sure but a lot of people yeah, lost. yeah money. yes yes yeah. people who were not in their lane definitely lost the money but people who in nft were in their lane been doing it and know exactly what they're talking about and not just their listen, winners yeah. it, it's it's like it's it's the waves of what we deal with like right now it's like assumable loans and like oh i'm gonna go and be in a, in a real estate investor with no money in and i'm like dude that's impossible trust me it's not so just like stay in your lane know what you're doing yeah. like so for you like have you had some people that you want to franchise with or? yes yes so so the they uh, they they don't don't want to stay in their, in their lane they they wanted to say like oh we're gonna have your burgers and then we're gonna have a hookah and then <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have uh, pancakes yeah and you know i said oh you know the, i think we cannot do this so. it reminds me of uh, the movie about mcdonald's that mcdonald's oh, movie, yeah. where like they franchise them and then they're yeah. like someone had like burritos he's like no he's like <laughs> we sell burgers and he's like yeah, yeah but i want burritos too and he's like no we sell burgers right. that's what we sell yeah, yeah so let's make burgers really good right, right i mean the the model is for sure like you have to think is in and out like yeah i agree you know what i mean like keep it simple and right. make a good product and i mean people will buy it right yeah but being a good person you know i still want him to get back in the you want to one because knowledge is a treasure Mm -hmm. and uh, i have read so many books in my entire life i read maybe like five books or ten books a month and i i can't leave somebody who's lost so i instead of me saying them no you can't like we're not interested i i'd recommend him a book called one thing by gary and the author gary keller yes and yeah, he, real estate. Right. The owner of Keller Williams. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's, it's like one thing, that book, right? The one thing, yep. yeah. And he tells about just do one thing in life and be very good at it. Mm-hmm. If it's burgers, then it's just burgers. If it's coffee like Starbucks, then, then coffee. Hopefully, he's probably reading the book and, you know, yeah. he, he he would understand, you know, how important it is being cons- consistent. The issue is people spread too thin and then they're not good. They're just not that good at a lot of things. They, they're trying to dabble with so many things and especially like, oh, you have to be... Uh, diverse and you have to have it's like yeah but there's one thing you have to do really well to allow yourself to do everything else and most people don't spend the time and effort to get really good at that one thing how old are you uh 33 now okay so i'm 36 so that's something i try to remind myself all the time like we were talking about like envy online and and knowing life it's like i have to remind me like that person's 56 or that person's 66 like that person has 20 years on me like he should be ahead of me right you know he should know more than me so then it's like I can't compare myself to someone that's been doing in it 30 years longer than I've been doing it. Right. So it's like, all right, you know what I mean? It's like, it just takes also time. It takes time. It's, it takes a lot longer than everyone realizes like, to get good, to get great at one thing. It takes a long time of working at it every day. I agree. And that's the, because, uh, it's almost like eating a pizza, you know? So if you have a pizza, that has four pies and you're spending some of your time, like one slice, is all about you getting better at one thing 
while the other three slices are getting better at other three things, then you would be only eating one pie of pizza, right? So what If you can reduce the other three things out of your life, that means you're eating one pizza a day. Yeah. That means you're getting more nutrition, more energy. Well, because the other thing is to be a, I think, I think to business owners and people that create companies are very special. And I think the hard part about it is nowadays they look so evil, right? Like, oh, these CEOs of companies, they make so much money and blah, blah, blah. The issue is, it's like those people also got really good at one thing and that has benefited a lot of other people. And like this, he wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for me doing right, this. Right. And he, and I wouldn't be here if I wasn't really good at like learning how to do real estate. That's the other issue. People see me now, they're like, oh, I wanna do what you do. I wanna do the videos, I wanna do all this, and I wanna have this guy. I'm like, yeah, but but you need to get really good at one thing. We right. got really good at one thing right. that allows us to do other things. Oh, yes. And then I've hired the people that are really good at those things. Right. I can't, I never could have gotten here if I never got great at one thing. Exactly. I, I never, know. this doesn't happen unless I got really good at selling houses. Right. And doing that stuff. Right. This doesn't exist without that. Right. And people want to do all of this. And it's like, why don't you get really good at this first? Right. And then come talk to me in right. five years. And then we'll talk about everything else. Right. No, I agree. I Even this, I'm like, I still practice. Like, I'm yeah. like, you know, this is only like podcast probably 50 for me. Right. There's like, I'll go back and watch. I'm like, oh my God, why do you always say that word? Right. I always, I'm like, God, you're sound like an idiot right now. Probably Adrian laughs at me all the time. He's like, God, his guy is stupid. Who would want, listen to his podcast? <laughs> Adrian, I've watched your podcast. Enough said. Okay. <laughs> the Black Room? What was it? No, The Dark Room. What was it called? Uh, what was your podcast called? Yeah, yeah, it was something. The Dark Room? I, I it was one, that was the one Dark Room. Right? It was one, he did one episode. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's, I, think, I think as we grow, I always tell people in their 20s, 21, I say, uh, you know, you can literally save your time, you know, and I like I I want to help them because me growing up I never had a mentor. You don't have the people. Yeah, I never nobody mentored me, so I'm always I always want to be the leader that I wanted to be one, or that I was looking when I was yeah. young. So I, all those qualities I want to be bring it in myself so I can help. Did you like, grow up here? Uh, I was grown up in Pakistan. But Pakistan. I, when I got here, I was young. Oh, okay. But then the idea of you know common example, I got again the knowledge is treasure, and I. have I want to give it to everybody. So one guy, he took a math course, but he was not ready. He just gave an assessment test mm -hmm. and he just scored bad. So once you score bad in the assessment test uh, and he wanted to, they, they told him you have to take three more math classes just to get to the college level math. So I told him that is like one, one semester, two, it's like a year and a half extra schooling, right? Three classes. Mm -hmm. I told him with my knowledge, what I, I, I did, you can always go to a different community college district. Let's say Riverside Community College. You can go to Norco Community College or, or you know East LA Community College, and then be prepared again and give the test again. And if you score good over there, you can bring that result, and they will accept that. Yeah. So you instead of taking three classes, that will save you a year and. Well, a the half. hard part is college is also a business now. I agree. RCC. I went to RCC for a few years, <clears throat> and I felt like. I, I never graduated. Yeah. <laughs> I have no degree. But like uh, my buddies that w were like, oh, I'm going to go to RCC for two years and I'm going to transfer out. Like every time they go to transfer, like, oh, you need one more class. And he's like, well, that's going to delay me a whole nother semester. Right. It's like a, this ongoing route that it's like, never, I'm never going to get out of here. And then I'm going to go to a four-year college and be there for three, four years. And now I'm 24, 25. Like, I, I agree. I always say like, you know, there's so much self-learning uh, that you can do. Nowadays. Yeah, it's, uh, I was a minor in electrical engineering, major in computer engineering, but uh, that's how I got my second job as software engineer. First job was electrical engineer, just by downloading a website, uh, by just going on a, uh, downloading an app, or do they also have a website called Udemy, Udemy. Uh, and I learned software engineering right there, app development. Mm. So sometimes you can just learn some skill and then you can get hired uh, easily. Yeah. And But again, you know, your your life should not be, uh, I mean, I understand people want to work, and that's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but life should be m more like just waking up, brushing teeth, going to bed, going to work, coming back, uh, wake, uh, brushing teeth, going back again, going to work, brushing teeth, going to bed, going to work. It should, you know, it should be more than that. You know, you should, we should care about humanity. We mm -hmm. should help people. We should uh, feed people. You know, we should. I mean, I always say, you know, God send us for a reason. It has to be a reason. You know, living a life. You know, and that's what differentiate 
us between us and animals animals are all about themselves because you know they don't have intelligence they mm-hmm. just have emotions so they just get hungry and then they just kill somebody who's smaller than them and a human being can easily turn into an animal if his desires goes up you know I can waste no time no time cuz i got to keep it tight i'm in my bag my bag my bag my bag i'm my eyes on the price mm-hmm. you know i can waste no time no time cuz i got to keep it tight i'm in my bag my bag my bag my bag i'm my eyes on the price mm-hmm. you know i can waste no time no time cuz i got to keep it tight give me the bass give me the beat i'm in my bag this round is on me give me the bass give me the beat i'm in my bag this round is on me give me the bass give me the beat i'm in my bag this round is on me Well, I think a lot, uh, Grant Cardone used to always say that uh, poor people are the most selfish people because they only can take care of themselves. And so, like, my goal has always been like that. The bigger I can get, the more people I can help. The more houses I sell, the more employees I can have. That's, that's right. And then the more people I help and pay them, then they get to take care of their families. And that's the hard part about being a business owner, especially a small business owner. It's like I have the pressure of being like this person feeds their family based on my ability to make us money which then like i tell my people all the time like you'll never know if i'm broke or rich and they're like why is that and go because your check will still come on the first and they'll all still come on the 15th you have no idea if i'm borrowing money to pay your pay your salary or not but it's my job to show up every single day to be like how do i provide for these people because yeah. without me then they have to go find jobs and what if they can't go find jobs and then you know so it's that, that ability to be like i don't think uh people who start businesses understand that the responsibility that you have I agree and so you better be really good at this before you hire people or before you kind of have them sign up for the journey right like I tell people all the time like oh you want employees that doesn't mean you can fire them next month when you have a bad month and then hire them a month later I agree. I agree. you have to be like all right I'm hiring this person obviously if they're a good employee but you, I'm gonna have to hire this person for the long haul Right. And I got to take on that responsibility. It's a responsibility that a lot of people don't want to take on. Yeah. Where it, you don't get to think and turn it off 9 to 5 and you go home at 5.15 and you don't have to worry about work until Monday morning at 9 a.m. That's yeah. a difference. Yeah, the funny part is uh, my employee my employee driver better car than me. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure, you know, the food should come on the table and he gets supported, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's very important. And this is all about life, you know. Uh, just bringing yourself down and living for others is the best thing in the world. Yeah. You know, so poor people, I have, every time I meet a poor person, you know, one experience was they were, they were, again, you know, they were poor in their mind, you know, when their mindset was Well, do you think mindset's almost everything then? I agree. So before leaving, you know, I, he was, he would sit, I feed on Holt and uh, Grove, uh, I think Fourth and Holt. Mm-hmm. right in Ontario so that street I cover with homeless people I know them by name Ronnie and everybody so but there was a new kid uh, been seeing him for like a month and I told him you know what you know you're so great here's your food I understand you you have an injury in the leg I understand you can work I said you you're so great you know what uh, don't discount yourself I want to one day I'm going to see you with a big house with two big swimming pools after two three days i never found that guy so it was just the hope mm-hmm. a lot of people in a lot of people in this war they don't want to give hope to other people well did they lose hope because they don't have faith and, and it's kind of like because i think when people something bad happens anytime something bad happens we have a choice or something good happens we have a choice in that moment to decide which direction we go life is is full of just forks in the road and every decision that everything that happens to you now have a fork and the hard part about it is is that sooner or later the fork gets if you don't have guidance or if you don't have faith or you don't have the right people around you or whatever then the 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 road that you shouldn't take gets wider and wider and wider because it gets harder and harder to take the right path again company you know be friends with somebody who will create at least one to two three thousand dollar in your life you know if they're dragging you down it's very dangerous and uh, people don't process like i my 13 year old kid said that the other day and i go and i said who you hang out you will become so if your friends are the friends that are always getting in trouble you will get in trouble 
and if those friends continue to get in trouble then the trouble just be like right now okay you're getting detention or you're getting in trouble at school or the parent the school's calling us sooner or later it's worse it's police it's jail and then what you know and it's just it's tough because it's like and i've tried to tell them like you know i know you think you're trying to be cool but you will never see or talk to these people ever again outside of high school or junior high and th- them thinking you're cool isn't going to pay the bills and not going to get you where you want to be in life yeah common example i know one of my customer i'm not going to name them <laughs> I know him and he's 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 watching me he's following me I'm not going to name him but uh he was a uh, he was homeless because of alcohol yeah he would sleep right where our 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 thing is right on cedar but I'm not going to mm-hmm. give the yeah. exact yeah. Lo- longitude and latitude yeah. his problem was alcohol so one day I told him you know what uh I know you're friends with this guy and he's a heavy drinker I know you lost your car in car accident so you're just on your own I even told him like you know we're going to give you a little bit of money just so you can get a car and sleep in there but his situation have changed. Mm-hmm. You know one thing I did I would spend extra 10 minutes of my life, you know, we'll make sure I cook the food fast and I just go and talk to him. I would tell him like you know you're great, you can do this. Uh you know uh and I I would get ask him like you know he was very attached to his grandmother and I would say you know Uh, you have two responsibility three responsibility one you have to inspire your grandmother in you know you have to inspire yourself and you have to inspire god to right with your actions and with your good deeds i i put a 30 day thing on him i said 30 days if you don't drink on the 31st day you're going to get a free burger mhm that was the in you you will imagine because if you see the bear what it does to you Uh, I think it's five dollar for two cans special, or I don't know. I don't drink, so yeah. it's like something, right? It's expensive. If you add that by, uh, multiply that by thirty, your averaging alcohol uh, consumption is around three hundred to three fifty dollars a month. You know how much is my car payment? Only hundred dollars, <laughs> right? And again, sacrifice comes in, right? So he he in eighteenth day he figured out where his money was going. He, in the twentieth day, he 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 came to me. He said, "Today is my last day." I I I will always be with you but I can't come to this location because it gives me trauma but here's my car and all, all thanks to you. Mm-hmm. And I said no it's not me it's God you know. Yeah. Because you're the one who made the decision. But again he did a self sacrifice just like I did. It's a sacrifice. Life is full of sacrifices and it's all about not being able to it's be able to pat is to realize that the gratification you're going to reach is later. And maybe that's the mission of God. it is going through life knowing that the f- is that it's not going to be easy to have good morals is very tough especially nowadays there's so many temptations that well you're going to have to wait 80 90 whatever your time is to truly reach the actual gratification of whatever that is you know and it's tough because it's hard to live for tomorrow when you don't know what tomorrow is then do the right thing today for tomorrow. Same thing with work. Like I know people all the time I tell them like if you knew if you worked every single day for the next 30 days and in 6 months you would have more money than you've ever had before, wouldn't you do that? Well, yeah. The problem is that day 1 nothing happens. Day 2 nothing happens. Day 3 nothing happens. And now you're day 30 and nothing happens. You lose faith in that it's going to happen. When it's like I tell people all the time like what's the secret? I'm like I just show up every day. There's nothing special about me. I should be a janitor. I have no college degree. There's no reason I should have all this. Right. There's no reason I have employees. I don't even know how to handle them sometimes, you right. know what I mean? And and I just have faith like, you know, I don't know how somehow I pay him every month. Don't know how. It's always worked out. Somehow the cards always fall. Right. How, do I make sacrifices? Yes, of course. But the question is it's at the end of the day, what is the most important thing? The sac- you have to sacrifice anything worth while I mean is sacrifice. You have it's not going to be given to you. And if it's given to you, then you don't appreciate it anyways. So then the 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 joy of it doesn't even matter. That's why you see like really rich kids and they have everything and they don't enjoy it because it's like they didn't they don't know they don't they don't appreciate what they have. It's I tough. Know, I know and every time I see like a person with situation like you know mine single mother or single parent yeah. or, or poor kid I always say you know what because my god gave me a little a uh, bit of a uh, uh you can call like a some super natural thing where i see i can easily see a spark in people's eyes and i 
I stop myself right there. I, I want, because I want to make a, out of that spark, I want to create a fire. Yeah. And out of that fire, I want to create a big blaze in them because I know they can do it. And that's everybody that comes at my place. Uh, a common example, the guy, the voice of frequency change. A uh, guy was uh, not going to name him, uh, but they wanted to be a doctor. But they saying like, it's hard. Before he met me, I said, it's just another class. So mm -hmm. I met him like last semester. He was starting hectic. I mean, he was getting hectic and he was tar tired. His voice frequency was very low. His shoulders were downhill. So I gave him hope. I said, God, you know, this was yeah. just coming from. I, I told him like, keep going. Look at me. I fail too. All, everybody fail. The idea is oh, don't compare yourself with anybody. Start with the man in the mirror. You know, if you're thinking somebody else is doing better in the class, they probably have failed once. They have the notes or they have the previous exams from some other student. Right, so don't com don't have that burden of comparing yourself with anybody. Start with the man in the mirror. Uh, today, uh, not today. Uh, I think last month he came in and he t exactly said what he, what I told him. I said, "How was your semester?" He said, "Oh, it was just like another semester." So see how the hope does to you. It's know? a belief that how difficult something truly is or not. Yeah, you know, and and it's just having the right people around you to realize it's not allow ourselves to get in our own way. Because that's really what it is, you know? I can't, I won't, it's too hard. It's people like me don't make it. I have this, that's why I don't get that. And it's like, if someone, someone trusts me out there has done it. And that means you can do it. And you almost have to have like like blind faith or, or, or just like, sometimes just like, I, I laugh. I know people that are very successful that are not smart. They are not smart that's at all. Right. And I say, like, that's their best benefit. And people go, like, what do you mean? I'm like, they're not smart to know what they're doing is hard. Right. They just do the same thing every day. You know, the the boring stuff is what makes you successful, not the flashy stuff. And problem the hard, hard part is nowadays everyone wants to do flashy stuff. Everyone wants this. Like, you know, we do a lot of videos. So people are like, oh, I want to make content like you do. Okay, pull out your phone, freaking shoot it. And they're like, yeah. yeah, but I need this, and I need the lights, and I need the mics, and I need... And I'm like, dude, I used to shoot on iPhone 8, right. and it was terrible. Right. Well, it didn't matter then. You know what I mean? Like, I just shot content. I just shot videos every day. Now I have someone that does it for me, but there was a point where I didn't. Right. I still did it, you know? And I was like, don't compare my chapter 20 to your chapter 1. You're just in a different chapter than me. And I, you know, you'll get to chapter 20 sooner or later, but you won't even realize... If I gave you chapter 20 today, you wouldn't even know what's going on in the story because you skipped all the chapters. You got to read every single chapter so when you get to chapter 20, you know what's going on in the book. You can't you can't just jump ahead. Yeah. No one jumps ahead in a movie. No, no. No one goes to the last 20 minutes going like, hey, let me see the ending. You won't know anything that's going on. Right, right, right. No, but we want to do that in life. I agree. I think uh, Samsung or Ikea, first product was not their product like furniture or the phones. Their first product was like pen or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. yeah, you just never know where the direction is going to take right, you. Right, And you just got to ride the ride as you go. I agree. Yeah, man. Well, this was awesome, dude. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm excited. Adrian, you ready to get some? Are you excited to try his burgers? You guys do You guys do smash burgers, isn't it? No, uh, handcrafted burgers. Handcrafted so burgers. So it's just, hand, it just uh, yeah, so our burgers are handcrafted. Uh, so We should probably talk about the restaurant right. for a little bit of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, burgers are handcrafted, you know, uh, the buns are custom. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we mastered a, we mastered uh, the skill of making, how to make a great burger. You know, like, uh, good luck to everybody, you know, but like, unlike, you know, other people, they try to make a burger look big by putting too much lettuce mm -hmm. or too much onion, too much tomatoes. Yeah, everything the cheap is, stuff. Yeah, yeah, everything is balanced here. Yeah. One, one layer of everything. Uh, delicately, delicately putting onions in a way where the citric acid doesn't go in your nose. Mm. Unlike you know in and out yeah, just yeah. together. But good luck to them too. Yeah. But you know you take that bite. The strong onions goes through your nose. What it does, it kills the flavor of the meat. Mm -hmm. If you put too much lettuce, the meat is get lost. Yeah. Right. And then the the tomatoes are lost. Onions are lost. So that's the idea of the making a perfect burger, right? And then you wrap in a way where anybody driving can eat it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So that, and then uh, our, we have a Nashville chicken sandwich too. Okay. That is being marinated like 18, 18 to 12 hours okay. in, the, in the marination process. And what it does is like it creates very juicy and tender uh, uh, kind of thing in from inside. Is it breaded or no? It's breaded. Okay. But what we do in the breaded, we twist it at a certain angle, which mm. is like 35 degrees. Okay. And we twist it up. Uh, at a rotation what it does it just creates an outer layer like cheetos better than that mm -hmm. more crispy and uh you know we cook at a special temperature oh. and so you know everything is very uh very 
what do you call it, like a, to the perfection. Well, the hard part is when you scale, then that's the worry that does those things go away. Right. Yeah. So that's the idea of, uh, you know, you, again, you know, because I've seen people crying in McDonald's, right, mm-hmm. with the same uh, consistency, same flavor. And every day when people come and they say, your food is very consistent. I said, yes. And that's the idea. Because I always say, don't have the success get in your mind. Because I, I know some people get busy and they say, you know what, it's too hard to stretch the fresh patties start throwing the frozen yeah, one yeah, yeah. and frozen ones are the worst one so people ask us like who you guys are and i always say like most of the people they don't know what they're eating right mm-hmm. and we what we do is like you know i'm about to t- turn 42 and what i say like people are dying of cancer mm-hmm. because of a lot of chemicals and everything our food doesn't have that you know what we do is we we help people in living a little longer Mm-hmm. You know, so everything is made out of scratch. You know, yeah. there's no chemicals. You know, because you got to have chemicals in a frozen patty to Just keep it cold, rest. or to keep it not spoiling. Right. And that's what people don't understand. If it can sit on the shelf for for a long time, right. it's not good for you. Right. And that's why probably we have a, a a weight issue and and other all the other health issues that we're having now. Like it's crazy to look back at photos of like 1950s at people at the beach and everyone's like in shape and skinny. Right. And right. then nowadays, like everyone's obese. It's like I don't think everyone got lazy. Right. Yeah. I just I just think that like I don't know if people process how many calories are in how much food and then how much calories are in those food if it's processed and then who knows maybe our bodies can't break down process they're just not you know it takes a you know our bodies just can't produce process and burn break down those things. It just it can't. You yeah. know what I mean? A common example uh, one of our customers he's a Christian and you know Christians they do like Muslims they do fasting 30 days Christians yeah. also do like 10 day fast. Right, so he did a ten day fast. He told me he had a food outside, uh, you know, like a Mexican burrito place or somewhere. Mm-hmm. He ate it, and he had to use the restroom right away. And then he ate, did a fasting ten days, and he ate our food. He said it worked as a nutrition. Yeah, he he had to go in the bathroom like after like tomorrow or some in the one because you can cheat people, but God has created our bodies in a way that you cannot cheat God because mm-hmm. if anything is not good, you have to go to the restroom because that's the idea because, the, because your body it wants to get it out of it. Cause yes. I mean, you, you know, your body is a temple and, and what you put into it. It's like, you know, it's why, you know, it's like people don't realize like alcohol is a poison. It's the reason why if you have too much of it, you throw up your right. body wants you to get rid exactly. of it. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it, it knows the balance between nutrition mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's something toxic. Yeah. The hard part is, is like, to wean off everything right and then you you go through those like withdrawals because our bodies get so used to it right. i mean the human body is very it's it, it'll, it'll adapt to what you put into it you know what i mean and and so just to get all that stuff out of you you know it's like people that go on cat you know cut caffeine out of their lives right. it's like all of a sudden they got headaches and it's some craziness and some people can't get through that you know it's tough yeah so our business is all about service helping people mm-hmm. you know bringing them uh more f- hope more faith and lifting them up you know yeah and uh, and again by making sure that you know uh, you know we we every day we we make sure you know they taste the quality and freshness yeah. in every bite too and they can live a little longer awesome awesome man well, watch everyone the best way to see your food the best way to go eat at your food and so they can stop by and uh, support you okay great yeah so where's your location at uh 11436 cedar avenue Bloomington, California. And what's your Instagram? Uh, nice Guys Burgers. Nice Guys Burgers. Make sure you go follow them. Go eat. Make sure you go support the good businesses that give back to other people. Man, I really appreciated this oh, conversation. It was, it was awesome. Was Adrian's excited for some food. He loves food. Great. And then uh, until next time, guys, peace. Peace.